Hello and welcome to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, Team Oxygen Addict. Online triathlon coaching, featuring event specific training plans and coaching support from Rob Wilby. You can check out team.oxygenaddict.com. We've got chiacharge.co.uk, which is the home of great tasting flapjack chia bars and other chia seed sports nutrition. And you can use the code COT10 for 10% off. Yum. And precisionhydration.com. They are leaders in triathlete sweat testing and sports hydration with multi strength electrolytes that match how you sweat. And again, we've got a 15% off this one with the product code cup of try 15 that's it all capital letters cup of try 15 and also we want to thank our patrons don't we Hal? we do the people who support the show with a monthly donation thank you and if you're if you're interested in that go over to the uh, auctionaddict.com forward slash podcast page and click on the little patrons link and you'll see lots of people's little faces up there so if you want to join them we'd really appreciate it and i've got helen back She's back. My buddy's back. Here she is. She's back, but not for very long because you're leaving to go to Rio again tomorrow morning, aren't Bright you? Bright and early. 5.55 is the flight. <laughs> Oof. That is it. That's nearly one. But lucky you off to Rio again. No, huh? I'm really excited. Um, it, yeah, it, it's sort of been a whirlwind week of um, <laughs> unpacking and, and washing and repacking and seeing people. And then, yep, off we go again. So, uh, yeah, by the time... Psychically, can you, can you hear, like, the thousands of listeners going, you cow, you're off to Rio. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, the past couple of days have been a bit grey and drizzly. And I was just like, oh, excellent. I get to go and see blue skies for a bit again. But apparently it's going to be all right here too. So, um, yeah, I, ca- I can't wait. And um, not just that, it's going to be really good with some incredible sport and incredible people and incredible stories. So I'm really looking forward to working at my first ever Paralympics. Oh, I hope it's, I love the Paralympics. I think I love it more than the Olympics, to be honest. I find it so inspiring and emotional mm. in equal measure. It's just, I hope they do a good job over there. If they don't, you're going to give them a slap from me. All right, I'll go around. <laughs> <laughs> Helen's coming, Rio. Uh, sort, yeah. sort your act out. <laughs> People are nervous, aren't they, about how it's going to be? Yeah, I think there's quite a lot of nerves. And I know a few weeks ago they had only sold 12% of tickets. But I think over the past two weeks they've done a lot to improve that situation. Um, I, It's not going to be London. It really, really is not going to be London. And the people that I feel most sorry for are the athletes because – those who did see London or who were inspired by London would have seen stadiums which were absolutely jam-packed. You know, the public, which was completely aware of it, completely mm. inspired by it. And, um, yeah, I think given the number of stadia and empty seats during the Olympics, it'll be difficult to imagine completely jam-packed. You know, I'd like to see, mate, I think it's about time they just go, do you know what? We're going to have this one great big festival of sport and don't have it be the Olympics and the Paralympics, have it be the Olympics. Yep. Just have it all. Do you remember when they had those like legacy games after London yeah. and there, were, there was there was Paralympic sport and able-bodied sport happening race after race and it just felt right to me. Definitely. And I just think they should get their act together. So come on, IOC, pull your fingers out. And the IPC. And the IPC, yep. yeah. And make it all one, make it all one body. And the Commonwealth Games do, uh, they have um, both together. Yeah. So, yeah. I think in future, it would, it makes sense, doesn't it? It does, yeah, definitely. I'd rather see, um, I'd rather see uh, para ability sprinting on the track more than I want to see, I don't know, surfing in the Olympics or skateboarding or something. Or golf. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go yeah. back to golf. <laughs> Apologies to any golfers out there, but you know what? <laughs> the world's best did not want, uh, well, vast majority of the world's best did not want to be there. Therefore, it should not be in mm. the game. Yeah. Anyway, this is a triathlon podcast. And apparently it is. Come on. on Check it on. It's debut um, this, this time around at, at the Paralympics. So that'll be really good to watch. And I think there'll be a number of GB medals, Rob. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got to be a gold rush again. It will definitely be. Lauren Stedman is the uh, one definitely to look out for. Alison Patrick as well. There's a number of them. Um, so. Joe Townsend, yep. he's going to be there, isn't he? Yep. It's going to be great. 
Iron Man UK legend. So, uh, yeah, good. I'm excited for it. That should be good. I am. I'm excited. Right, so I managed to watch some of the World 70.3 Championships this weekend. Did you? Which bit, which bit did you watch? I was watching. Let's see, where were we? It was pretty much... Uh, I saw a bit of the bike early on, and then I saw a chunk of the bike leading up to... Um, leading up to the men coming into T2 and then the start of the run. Um, so I got to see, I mean, they must not have been far away from the end of the bike. Now, who was it? Was it Tyler Butterfield went to the front and absolutely drilled it on, they had like a series of switchback downhills. Mm. And he, <laughs> he came by the, the lead group on the aero bars doing about 180 miles an hour. <laughs> Like a, he looked like a downhill skier, and the commentators were going, "Well, he's a really good bike handler." And you know when you see motorbikers like shift their entire body off the side of the saddle and one knees down on the ground. Yeah. Never seen descending like it on the aero bars, and he put like all this, all this massive gap into people in the space of this minute that I watched, and I was like, "Wow!" But uh, but yeah, then it was it was onto the run and. Um, there was a bit of a, a battle going on between Keen Lay and, and Tim Reed at the time as I was watching. Mm. But yeah, it was good. And obviously there was a lot of a lot of time spent filming Holly Lawrence as well. So that's gotta be really our headline our headline for the world champs, hasn't it? Holly Lawrence winning. I think so. I got it a little bit wrong, didn't I? I said Holly Lawrence third. You did, yeah. You had it behind Mel Hauschild, didn't yep. you? And Daniela Reef. I think we both had Reef down for the win. Yep, Daniela Reef, then I said um, Mel, and then I said number three would be Holly Lawrence. How wrong was I? Well, she had the race of her life, didn't she? What a day to have it. Yeah, but she has had a... F- yeah, yeah, definitely she did, but she has had a number of, because we spoke about them, yeah, brilliant results this year. Results, yeah. 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 Um, but I, so I saw a little bit of the bike and at that point she was chatting to the lead motorcyclist to probably say you know hey how how's it how are we doing here and how far back are they mm. um so yeah she had enough energy to chat so i reckon she could <laughs> she'll go even faster she could have gone harder she will go even <laughs> and she got the best bike split of the day and it was just a blooming impression. yeah she looked like it looked like she was in control all day didn't she um and like to be fair i don't know whether I don't know whether Reef just wasn't firing on the day, but it just she just didn't seem to make any inroads on the bike whatsoever, did she? She did do two Ironman in the space of two weeks, wasn't it? A week even. Yeah. How how long ago was that? Now it wasn't long ago at all, was it? No. It, was it about four weeks ago? It was. Was it even closer than that? Yeah. And that has got to have an impact. Yeah. Because she yeah. didn't take either of them, you know, easily. Yeah. Well, one of them Switzerland, wasn't it? What was the other Roth. one? Roth. Roth she and got Switzerland. within about right. three minutes yeah. of the world record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But where are we now? That was, when was that? That was mid-July. Mm. So it was six weeks ago. I still think they back, I still think back to back. She thinks she's, maybe she's got her eyes on Kona. Yeah. Maybe she came out here for a hit out to see how things went. And um, But that's rude, actually, to Holly Lawrence, because she's the new world champion. Totally. So... We shall see. So congratulations, Holly. V, impressive. Uh, so if we just say she did a she did a be- women's best 219 bike split. <laughs> That's mental. Yeah. So. To finish in 409 overall. Yeah, just um, just under two minutes ahead of um, Melissa Hellshield. And then Heather Wirtel was third. Yeah, good. And then over on the men's side... Uh, what can only be described as a titanic battle between Tim Reed and Seb Keenley. They they went at each other head to head. It was a proper runner's race, Helen. It was really exciting. Oh. Surging off each other and one dropping back a few yards and then surging past and the other one having another go. And, uh, you know, what, two seconds in it at the finish line? Yeah, it, really, it was. So it was a sprint finish, wasn't it, clearly? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, unbelievable racing by Tim Reed, and maybe he was under our radar a little bit last week because we were saying, you know, wouldn't it be great if Craig Alexander managed to pull one out and and win it on the home turf? And I'd completely underestimated Tim Reed's ability, so hats off to him. But obviously, the home the hometown advantage there, getting cheered on by your locals, obviously 
produced something special for him, didn't it? And and again, he's a blooming magnificent athlete. He did a one eleven run. He did a twenty two fifty three swim, and a two oh six bike. So, um, yeah, he's a real deal, is Tim Reed. And Rudy Vild was third in three forty four forty. So basically, the top three finished within about thirty seconds of each other. Yeah, it was a pretty stacked up, wasn't it? Yeah. Terenzo Bazzoni, another minute back than Sam Appleton. Tim Don down in seventh, only another minute behind them. So, uh, close one. Apparently, our pick, Lionel Sanders, just never made it back into the show no. after after losing time on the swim. Um, he put out some kind of crazy power. I saw some posts somewhere that he'd ridden at 360-something watts all day. Wow. <laughs> um <laughs> And just and just hadn't made any inroads. So whether that just shows the power of, you know, there's a pack of eight guys up the road riding, even riding legal distance, mm. super super hard to make inroads into it. So yeah, tough times, eh? I know tough times. And um, I, I think Laura Siddle, who we mentioned, um, well, we've had her on the show. I think she was 12th. Nikki Bartlett, 25th, yeah. and then Caroline Livesey, I think, was 28th. I want to say. Good stuff. And if she wasn't, it might have been 26. Apologies. Um, I can tell you right now. Um, let me just tell you now, and then I've got it right. Um, other Brits, Rob Leander K was 18th. Oh, really? I didn't even know she was racing. Yeah, she was 18th. That's good to see um, her back racing again. Yeah. I wonder if she'll be at Kona. Because uh, all she's got to do is validate, isn't it, as oh, a past yeah. champion? Yeah, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, right, yeah, right, it's finally come up, Rob, I can tell you right now. Yeah, Caroline lives the 29th. And Nick there you Bartlett go, you got it right. Fifth. Good effort, well done, everybody. Um, okay, over to Zoffingen, yeah? Yeah, let's go to Zoffingen. Emma Pooley, straight from the Olympics yep. for a third victory at Zoffingen Powerman Long Distance World Duathlon Championships. She is unstoppable at duathlon, isn't she? Yeah, because she's a fine runner and a, well... Clearly, she's at the Olympics. Um, she's, a, she's quite a handy she's cyclist. She's a handy as cyclist. Well. Yeah, um, I don't think the Olympics went the way that she wanted to, having come out of retirement for it. But um, yeah. I guess that was always going to be a very difficult task. Um, and she had said she wanted to do multi-sport, and then I guess British Cycling were like, "Hey, come back, come back." Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And what are you going to do? You're not going to go. No, I'm not going to go to the Olympics. But I had imagine. I read she just said she was just making a lot more money as a multi-sport athlete. Yeah. And so, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer to go and do that to earn your money. But then if someone says, do you want to come to the Olympics? I'd imagine you would. Yeah, and, and you know, get get back into it. But it must be difficult switching your training again, just back to yeah. pure cycling. And I'm sure the coach well, you is... wonder, You wonder, don't you, looking at how well she's going at Zoffingen, yeah. how much she did change her training. I know, in the run-up to it, I, I don't think the coach has let her do, like, in... in I don't know, maybe like sort of two months out or something, they're like, right, stop the running now. I don't think they let her do the run training that she perhaps had previously done. Well, how much would that break your heart if you came up against her this weekend, knowing that she's not run for a month? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And you still get, like, she's won by 11 minutes, hasn't she? So pretty much a domination you're two miles up the road by the finish line totally <laughs> oh dear so emma pulley takes it out in 706 from nina bren of switzerland in 717 and suzanne svensson of denmark in 731 so i mean 24 minutes i had a third that's yeah. it's unbelievable isn't it uh men's race sepp oiden of belgium in 623 felix kohler of germany in 628 and soren Bystrup of denmark in 633 yeah nice one are you tempted by the idea, Helen, of a 30k run off the back of a 150k bike? No. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> Full respect to anyone who's into that. That is a hardcore event for hard people. No, I'm not, to be honest. Um, no, no. And I don't know, I don't imagine that the crowds are quite like the crowds that, I don't know, were in Bolton, for example. It would be quite a long, it's lonely... Well, Zoffingen is the it's the home of duathlon. It's meant to have a really good reputation for support and stuff. Okay. So so who knows, hey? Um, but no. oh, we didn't do age groupers at the World Seventy Point Three oh, Champs. We didn't. Can I give him a shout out? Yeah, do it. So uh, Imogen Simmons of GB won um, the eighteen to twenty four age group, and she was the second fastest age grouper 
overall. Yeah, solid. Yeah, she did 439.38. Um, and then Michael Birchmore, who's in the 25 to 29 category, he did 402.58 and was the third fastest age group athlete overall. And then Ruth Purbrook, who I know listens to the show. So hello, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. <laughs> and well done. Um, she was third as well in the female 25 to 29 category in 447. Congratulations. We also apparently had a silver for Deirdre Casey of Ireland in 440. So well done to all of you. Nice to get a medal. Oh, big, yeah, great, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. Now, a bit of local racing this weekend in the UK. We had the Helvellyn Triathlon. Um, now, we get to mention this, Hells, because it's one of my favourite results. Uh, favourite, not results, <laughs> one of my favourite events of all time get to run up and down Helvellyn at the end of a triathlon nice. after swimming in icy cold water it's a real if you live in the UK it's a real must do event if you're nuts like we are um, now results even provisional results aren't out yet as we're recording but one of the guys I coach raced and he let us know the men's results we haven't got the ladies ones yet unfortunately so Alex Lawton uh, three time winner came in win 331 followed by Alex Foster in 341 uh, didn't get the third place name in 348 and then my mate Ryan good on him oh now you see Rob <laughs> on that bit of paper I thought that was you coming no two seconds that's off. not me <laughs> you thought I was in fourth I thought yeah. were you doing were you were you back in the Lake District <laughs> That, that would have been quite a comeback, wouldn't it? Now, the think... chap's name's Ryan Gavin, um, and he managed to record a 3.49, taking something like, I think he was like 16 or 18 minutes faster than last year. So he'd said all along, if I can get in the top 10, I'd just be delighted by that. And so to finish fourth overall, totally, totally made up by it. So well done, Ryan. Awesome. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Don't get to do a shout out to people I coach. Who does? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what else was going on this weekend? The Rubicon was on, wasn't it? Yep, the Rubicon. The race over in, over in Yorkshire. And there's some fairly entertaining stories about that race out on social media, which uh, I'd encourage you to go and read about if you're the kind of person who enjoys reading about a little bit of controversy in triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be careful what we say here, given the uh, the libel laws in the UK, won't we, Hells? Yeah, yep, yep. Yes, you can Google it, though. Like I, I did a bit of Googling Google and it. stuff comes up, so... Looks apparently like the race changed hands and had been sold by its former owner and the new owner didn't quite put on the event that people were hoping for or expecting. But if you get yourself over onto the Facebook group, the Ironman Journey, I was having a giggle earlier on going, ooh, ah, no, that can't be right, can it? Yeah, it's just a shame, <laughs> so, though, if anyone, it's the sort of thing, isn't it, that if you did enter it and um, it wasn't yeah, kind of totally. up to scratch, then that's... It's not really yeah, fair, is it? Yeah, with a great reputation, and then it's yeah. it's taken over, and that the new owner doesn't seem to have uh, doesn't seem to have lived up to the, the the prior events, unfortunately. But still, so if you race that, let us know, give us a tweet. That'll be uh, make for interesting reading. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one lovely. which was going on um, was the sundown of triathlon, and I haven't got the results in front of me, but all I heard was that it was just wet, 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 and I'm not mm. going to start singing. <laughs> There wasn't a lot of sun at all. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Right, so let's let's have a little look see ahead then. This coming weekend, we've got, in the UK, we've got two big races, haven't we? We've got Ironman Weymouth and the Vitruvian. Um, now, I've heard from our pals over at Precision Hydration, they're actually going to be at Ironman Weymouth at the little expo stand like they were at Ironman UK. So if anyone's down there and wants to get a sweat test done, you can get a sweat test done actually at the expo. They'll have their kit with them. And um, the guys have said they will do you a deal on the price of a sweat test if you go up and tell them you're a listener to the podcast. So cut price sweat testing in the flesh you can also of course go online and do the online sweat test there and find out what kind of uh, personalized electrolytes they recommend for you um and good news hells they have increased the uh, increased the percentage off that our listeners get that when is. they purchase yeah that is good news so you can now use the code cup of try 15 to get 15% off instead of 10% off. Um, yeah, so keep spreading the word. And if you are a listener to the podcast, let them know, because obviously people advertise with us and you let them know that you've heard about it here, then it helps everybody out, doesn't it? So 
get yourself down to Weymouth. Now, one thing that they mentioned was um, they've sold out of a lot of their products at the moment and they've got about a week to wait before a lot of them come through. So there's some kind of pre-order deal going on on their website at the moment simply because there's been a rush on that new product that's come in and a lot of it's sold out, Hells, which I suppose is a good problem to have in business. I think that's a good sign. Yeah. Isn't it? It's it's not good for me and my cramping calves at the minute. (laughs) (laughs) No. Are you doing much training at the moment, Rob? Um, do you know, this is, I, this is my first ever, Helen. I did a three run day yesterday. Oh, I ran three, am I, I ran am, I, am I thinking that there's, three a, there's, times there's a, a long day. run coming up, Rob? Well, yeah, maybe. Over some mountains, potentially. Maybe. Further north yeah. of England. Further maybe. north of England. I mean, further north than you live in England. It was one of those days where I thought, well, I may as well go for another run. And then later on in the evening, I thought, I might as well go for another run. So I've, I've done plenty of double run days in my time, but I've never done a triple run day. And my experience was the second run, extremely tiring. Mm. Third run, I felt like I could run forever. It was quite surreal. Wow. So why would, was... you, why would you do a triple run day, Rob? <laughs> From a training and physiology point of view, yeah. there probably is no reason. From a sanity point of view, sometimes you've just got to go for another run, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Pull the head torch on, get yourself out under the stars. It was uh, it's just one of those days, mate. Fine, fine. Um, uh, right, so there's potentially a long run coming up for you in a month or so. Potentially. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Maybe sooner than that. Right. <laughs> I'm not setting myself up like I did last time with no, triathlon. No, that's fine. I'm not letting you go because you'll, on the one hand, you'll give me a hard time for not committing to it, and then on the other hand, you'll give me a hard time. <laughs> actually entering the damn thing in the first place <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm just wondering if it's something that um was on both of our radars and we we're like that looks incredible that would be great do you know if it is that and if it isn't that well then hey could be something else it, it kind of is but it's not that okay excellent it's not that it's that's on the same day as Kona you see and I've yes. got some stuff going on on the day of Kona so I was gonna go and do that event should we tell people what that event is yeah, when, it's if you're not called, doing it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? So there's this there's this ultra run, a 50 mile ultra called uh, is it called Lakes in a Day? Yes. And it's basically north to south across the Lake District. Um, and uh, well, what I'm planning to do, Hells, I'm going to go and run a chunk of that on my own. Okay. That's what I'm building up for. Okay. I'm going to do the section from Keswick to Ambleside. That's my plan. Nice. Um, I can't make it work on the day of the race, so I thought, right, why not try and get out? And so it's not even an ultra. It's just like. It's just going to be a long day in the mountains, isn't it, really? Brilliant. And this isn't to build up to something crazy, even more crazy, like a Bob Graham round, is it? Well, you might think that, but I couldn't possibly comment. Excellent. <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> www.lakesinaday.co.uk, if you are interested in the Ultra on the 8th of October, I... I, I spoke to the organisers. You know, we had them on when I did that Open 5 adventure. Yeah, they're the guys who do Open 5, aren't yep. they? They are the same guys. So if it is, if it is, you know, along those lines, it will be brilliant. Awesome, yeah. They're a great crew. Yep. They'll do a good job of that. Yep. So check that one out, lakesinaday.co.uk. Um, I was quite tempted, but then obviously found I couldn't really run for a bit of this year. And yeah. there's things like, oh, I happen to be going back out to Brazil where I will not be running. Yeah. <laughs> But, you have to come to my Kona party as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We've got to get our priorities straight. Yeah, yeah. Um, Where would the 8th of October be without Hamish sitting in the corner on his laptop, right? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so that one's definitely off the cards for both of us. Um, and um, if you are not from the UK and are not into ultra running, then all I can say is just Google Bob Graham Round. And you will find out um, about a really impressive feat of endurance, which people can go and do in the same part of the world, in the Lake District. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's it's quite awesome. Some of the people who complete it and their stories. So have a little Google. Yeah, yeah. Read. And if Rob's going to do it, pretty cool. Amazing. Hey, steady on. You can't you can't vote me into the Bob Graham just because you fancy it. No, no, I'm just saying you Let's are see. going to do it. We'll, we'll Red... see how we go. Let's it's see how we go. It, that's good too. I've heard horror stories as well, so that's fine. <laughs> oh, fun stuff. And uh, one other sponsor I want to mention is our buddies over at cheercharge.co.uk. So the great chasing flapjacks, really loving the cheer flapjacks actually hells. They are 
they are fueling my runs at the moment. Good. Loving it. They are, I don't know, the kind of chia seeds are, you should bring some back for me from, from that, from where they grow in Brazil. Well, yeah, yeah. Bring us back. The supermarket they taste kind of like, how do you describe them? Chia seed. They, they kind of go. I'd, I'd say, I don't really they know. They kind of like they... swell up in your mouth, don't they? They kind of go like, I don't know, like chewing gum almost. No, it's not chewing gum, but pomegranate seeds is maybe the best way to, to describe them. <laughs> Um, Do you think? I'm not no? really sure. Well, I've only ever just thrown them in things. I've never had just a mouthful uh, of chia right. seeds. So to be honest, I don't really know. Um, but you know. Right, so, so you eat the flapjack, right? And the chia seeds are in there. And then after you swallow the flapjack, you know how seeds kind of stay in your mouth. Mm. And then they kind of swell up with the moisture in your mouth and make these delicious squirty little things to chew on. It's great. It's really quite, I don't know, unique is the only way to describe it. But I'm a big fan. There we go. Okay. Well, yeah, chia seeds so is ten <laughs> percent off with the code COT ten at chiacharge.co.uk. Oh boy! Right. Do you know what? It's time to go to our interview of the week, and we had the uh, we had the pleasure of getting to interview with Von Van Vlerken. Oh, great stuff! Love her. She is. She could have popped right out of the mould from Siri Lindley and Beck Keats. She's such a happy, bubbly, bouncy little person, and. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed interviewing her. She's such a top girl. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm going to download it and uh, enjoy it, maybe for my plane journey back from, from Rio. Cool stuff. All right, so listen, I'll hand us over now over to our interview and we'll finish here. Helen, have a fantastic time in Rio. Thank we you. We shall miss you. We'll hear from you again in a couple of weeks' time, I guess, won't we? Yeah, we'll do. Cool beans. Have a safe trip. Everyone else, thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to The Cup of Try. I'm Rob Wilby and she's Helen Murray and this is our interview with Yvonne Van Vlerken. Yvonne, welcome to the Cup of Try Triathlon podcast. How are you? Hey there. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. It really is. It's great to have you on. We're really excited to uh, to hear all about your year and I believe you're over in Boulder at the moment, staying with uh, Siri Lindley and Beck Keat. Yes, indeed. You're totally correct. Yeah, so we're enjoying for and uh, yeah, it's our first time here in Boulder and uh, I'm very thrilled to spend some really quality time with my coach because that's for me it's kind of special because normally all our contact goes by phone or through email so it's uh, yeah no cheating here <laughs> yeah no you're basically you're living in the basement is that right yeah. you're actually you're, yeah so no slacking if you're not getting enough sleep she's going to be on your case <laughs> yeah well the biggest problem is that I like to do extra stuff and Siri is so careful with her athletes and she knows exactly the doses that you need. So uh, at home, I will sneak out for second runs or just a, an extra added easy spin <laughs> and no chance of me doing this. It's really, really hard. <laughs> hey, do you know, it's, it's interesting to hear you say this because uh, like so many of the athletes I work with, they want to do more mm. all the time. And and it's great to see that this, this runs all the way through the sport right to the very top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's both my partner and me, actually. We always do, uh, we always try to do extra, but you shouldn't. And I know, and I should should know after being in this sport for 17 years. And, you know, after been doing this sport so long and there's so much, so much kilometers in my body, I, I really don't need to do the extra. But, um, yeah, I just love what I do. So, and especially in a place like this in Boulder, it's just so much fun to just go out and do, yeah, just enjoy. I'm a an outdoor person person as well so i yeah i just want to go out <laughs> well there can't be many places in the world better than boulder to go training and it must be it must be quite hard for you to not go out for that second run during the day with the incredible scenery all around you i imagine yeah and especially where siri lives she lives like so close to to the reservate and all the lakes and stuff and it's just oh such an uh, amazing area here so yeah I'm, I'm really having a tough time but she's watching me so oh. <laughs> 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 that's great yeah so let's 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 start by talking about that a little bit you you've changed to being coached by Siri um how long ago was that how long have you been working with her for well actually a lot of people don't know but it's already almost five years by now so it's pretty long time it really yeah oh, I had no idea because I, I was cheating I was doing a bit of research earlier and it said that your coach is Mark Allen on your Wikipedia page so it just goes to show doesn't it that 
that you can't always trust what you read on the internet. So, uh, so it's five years you've been working with her for now. Yes, five years already. Yeah, and it has been a very good five years, to be very honest. Um, yeah, I started doing triathlon when I was. Uh, what? Uh, let me look. It was the year two thousand, and I had some really amazing years and doing very very well. And then I just got in kind of a I don't know not a depression because I'm never depressive, but I just didn't get the performances anymore and I kind of like um I lacked like the enthusiasm and just like the happiness in my training and racing and that's the point where I um met Siri and I was almost ready to like like quit and just get out of this sport and just do something different but um yeah she got me back on track and um never been as happy as in the last couple of years so I'm doing really really well that's really cool because it does seem like the we had her on the show helen interviewed her and i've listened to a couple of interviews with her as well in different places and she just seems like the world's most positive happy friendly person that you just be inspired by being around her is that is that the main thing that she's brought to you do you think oh uh, well what you're saying that's definitely correct she's just such an amazing uh, amazing person amazing woman amazing coach and uh, her happiness and her gratitude and everything that she that comes with siri just um yeah just dropped over to me and um yeah, she's just she has so much knowledge and experience, and it's just the all around package that um, I think you will never find with another coach. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so listen, I want to I want to ask you about a few things here. I've made my notes. We'll go through the greatest hits of your career, and this can be like uh, they used to have a show in the UK called "This Is Your Life." So basically, this is your triathlon life right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a two-time winner of Challenge Roth. You're the 2008 Iron Distance World Record holder when you set that at 8:45:48. You took that record off the legendary Paula Newby Fraser, who'd held it for 14 years, and you took over five minutes off the record at that point so that's pretty astonishing there isn't it and then that same season you went on to get silver medal at Kona behind Chrissy Wellington so let's start with that then let's start with the record in Roth you'd obviously been a really good triathlete leading up to this point but were you expecting to break the world record at Roth on that day especially given from what I remember the weather was pretty pretty awful that year wasn't it oh the weather was horrendous uh cat raining cats and dogs the whole day it was just <laughs> horrible yeah uh well i was really going for the world record because um, the year before was my first long distance race at challenge rot and um i didn't know uh, uh if i was capable to do it but i'm um, doing my first long distance at challenge rot in 2007 and doing i think it was a eight eight hour 50 or eight hour 51 um yeah i was just amazed by how easy it went it maybe sounds stupid because the ironman is of course long distance race is never easy but a lot of people didn't know that um i came from a racing duathlon so i was a uh, world champion itu long distance and a european champion several times so um coming from that background uh, to run the marathon off the bike and just be running four minute a case that's just um yeah easy <laughs> well it, it the pace is just so so much easier than running off the bike in a duathlon because you just go 330 the whole time so yeah yeah so um i just set that goal for the year after because because I was so close so I said you know what um I'm just going for that I want to have the world record so that's actually where I was thinking of like for the full year competing uh, or uh, preparing for challenge rod in 2008 and well everybody told me on the morning that it wouldn't be possible because as you mentioned it was really uh, the worst conditions you could have but um, <laughs> yeah at that moment you know I'm from the Netherlands just like you guys in England uh, we're used to rain right so that's um, exactly yeah. it yeah you feel at home in the rain right yeah awesome so um, I did pretty well in the rain so uh, I managed to do it and yeah was pretty happy with it <laughs> and do I remember rightly was it the did you run the fastest ever women's marathon at that point in that race? Wow. Well, was the second fastest women's marathon ever, something like that? You got the figures. I don't know. I ran a, I do, do know what I ran. I ran a two hour 54. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But probably girls have been faster. And especially at this moment, uh, a lot of girls run way below there. So I have to. Well, I think I read, I'm, I'm pretty sure I read at the time it said that you ran that what was at the time. Here we go. It's on Wikipedia again. The second fastest female iron distance marathon of all time. Wow. I didn't even. 
Yeah, there you it's go. Nice. It sounds cool. I will take it. I'm good. With that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, bit, the the good thing would be if I could run that again because because this was that was the only race ever that I have run that fast. So uh, it was probably because of the rain, you know. You feel really good, and it's it's lighter to run fast when it's rainy. So. We need some yeah, rain in Kona this year. We need some rain in Kona on the run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's happened before, hasn't it? It's never yes. never been belting down. But a few years ago, I remember a mate of mine went out there and he said it just dumped down on him for the first two hours on the bike. And he was like, this is like time trialing back home in Birmingham. Mm. Well, I would be happy with just having rain on the run, not on the bike, though. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, <laughs> let's keep our fingers crossed then. Who knows how fast you could go out in Kona if you get a bit of rain, hey? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You organize it, right? All right, okay. fingers crossed. Yeah. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> All right, so you go from there. You've you've had your sort of your fastest ever debut. You've taken the world record in 2008, and then you go out to Kona that year, and uh, you come up against an informed Chrissy Wellington. Now, you were at that point. This was when Chrissy had her puncture, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And maybe you remember from your interview with Beck. Uh, Beck, yeah, yeah Beck gave her a <laughs> CO2. So we always make jokes about that. Because, um, yeah, well, when she wouldn't have done that, then I would have won. But, of course, you never want to win like that. So I'm happy she did. But uh, we do make we do make. <laughs> That's jokes. so sweet of you to say. You've got a joke about it now, haven't you? Yeah, we do make a lot of jokes about it, yes. Well, when we had Beck on, I said to Helen afterwards, I think that Beck should never have to buy a drink again for the rest of her career. Whenever Chrissy sees her, she's got to pick up the bar tab. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. She owes her, yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So listen, talk us through that race at Kona then. Wow, yeah, that's a long time ago. Hey, it was my first Kona ever. So I think uh, uh, what made a big difference is that I didn't have any expectations. Uh, maybe other people had because, of course, I had a great race in Watt. But I just went yeah. in the race and was my first Kona. And, um, yeah, I just went out there, um, had an amazing swim. Ha <laughs> ha. No, not. I came out of the water with uh, <laughs> one hour and eight minutes. It's so you know, <laughs> never give up. You had up, the work to do, didn't there. you? Yeah, yeah. I had the work cut out for me. So, um, my bike ride was very good because Chrissy had a puncture, I had the fastest bike time, um, in Kona 2008. So, that, um, I think I came off the bike in third position just behind Belinda Granger. So, I caught Belinda, and um, well, chasing Chrissy, um, doesn't make any sense because nobody ran as fast as Chrissy. So, um, yeah, and that gave me my um, my second place in my first Kona. And um, I actually never expected that, and a lot of people around me either. And uh, it just was a good day for me. I don't, I can't remember that it was very hot either. It was just a very, very good conditions that year. And, um, yeah, as I said, I think the biggest advantage was that I didn't have any expectations for myself and no pressure, so... Oh, that is interesting, actually, because that ties in a little bit with what you said earlier about moving over to be to be coached by Siri because of her personality and her gratitude and things like that. So over the years, have things evolved for you where you've ended up feeling more pressure to win? And do you think that's kind of affected the way you race and the results that you've got? Oh, definitely. Like um, I raced Ironman Frankfurt four years in a row. Uh, so my first Ironman Frankfurt race was in 2009. Yep. The year after that, I got second in. Uh, Kona, we had the battle be between me. You, you can maybe remember between Sandra Wallenhorst and me. That's right. Yeah, yeah, because she had such a really fast time at um, Ironman Austria in Klagenfurt. Maybe you remember. So we were like, she was only two minutes slower than me. And there was like a little uh, confusion about who had the world record. And well, uh, big, big thing. So they wanted to have the um, the, the competition straight ahead in, um, in Frankfurt. That's why we both raced Frankfurt. She won, by the way. And I got second. Um, so, and yeah, then I raced Ironman Frankfurt for consistent consecutive how do you say it in english consecutive is years consecutive? Yeah. yeah oh god hard, hard word oh english is so tough <laughs> i tell you what mate your your english is a lot better than my netherlands ah, is. then you're dutch <laughs> yeah it probably is <laughs> well, well i'm trying my very best so um yeah and you know i remember frankfurt is just an amazing venue an amazing race but so much media and there was so much pressure on me and i really lost my joy in racing there a bit so um didn't really help 
help to to keep up the joy and that's really what um what helps me when i'm happy and when i really want to race an event and i don't have too much pressure i do my best yeah. races and it was just too much pressure in frankfurt because of course i'm a european girl and all my sponsors are um from the from the European market and it just was always always so much stuff going on and it ended up like me puking like totally my guts out like half an hour before the start the last years were the be- were the worst and really? yeah really bad I remember I think there was the last edition where uh, my best friend was with me and uh, my best girlfriend from the Netherlands and um, I was just so sick from the nerves and everything and you know that's not a, a good good idea before you have to do an Ironman to just puke your whole guts out yeah. and so it was just the nerves yeah it's, it's amazing isn't it how much of this game even for that you know you lot who are the very very fittest humans on the planet and so much of it comes down to the mental aspects of it still there's so much of your race can be ruined by all the pressure put on you in a press conference beforehand or the expectation of other people. So Yeah, totally. I just I just couldn't handle it. I, I really did a bad job in those years. And it's it's those years like in 2010, 2011, where I totally lost the joy of racing. And I was still enjoying my training because I've always been a training junkie, uh, whichever yeah. sport I did. So um, I was still enjoying that, but I just couldn't handle the pressure. And mentally, I was just weak. So I really worked hard on that. And um, then afterwards with Siri, that all disappeared. And, um, you know, I can, I, can, I can hardly explain how it feels to, to just race and not have any of those problems anymore. And that's why you see me race a lot. Uh, you probably men, um, have noticed and other people as well. <laughs> I race back to back and I just race so much because I totally love it. And I don't feel like um, it's hurting my bunny anymore. Like in those years where I was really struggling, I would have so much GI problems and uh, with all the all the stress that I had, I, I felt even sorry for my body that I was putting it through uh, all that stress and like that's all yeah. all has gone so now i just love racing and i ha- have zero problems anymore and i recover so fast because that's that was all in the past so it's just fun and i'm enjoying so much and yeah i'm really so thankful that i found the solution and that i yeah found uh yeah a second breath <laughs> Uh, oh, I love that. I, I really believe in the connection between the mind and the body. And, and I, I love talking to people like you and Beck and Siri who talk so much about gratitude and talk about how, you know, when you're grateful for what's going on and things are going well, things go better for you that you're grateful about it. And when you've got challenges, the challenges are made easier by being grateful about what's going well and not the other way around. So it's amazing to hear you talk Definitely. about this so candidly, because I think everybody from the very first age grouper all the way through to the pros knows that on the races where they put tons and tons and tons of pressure on themselves yep. and they're not enjoying it, yeah. you may as well not be there. Yeah, Even right. if you have a great result, you may as well not be there because you've just lost the point in the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't even think there is a difference between racing as a as a, as a good amateur or, or a pro. You, uh, it's all, We're all the same human, human people and uh, because the pros are maybe a little bit faster, they still uh, we're the same and we tick the same and everything. And yeah, the gratitude is a really important thing. And um, I actually tattooed it on my, uh, on my uh, arm in the, um, in the I, I don't know how you say that in the uh, inside of my arm. So when I lie, on, oh, yeah. yeah, when I lie on my arrow bars, I can read it. But uh, in the beginning of those years, I I looked at it a lot, but I don't look at it much anymore because I'm just full fulfilled with gratitude and happiness. So uh, <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know? Will you send us a send us a photo of your tattoo? Yeah. We'll use it as the cover shot for the for the podcast. Oh, That'd be fantastic. Definitely, we'll do that for you. It's a nice one. Oh, that's that's awesome. So, I mean, I'm looking back over your career highlights here that you've got on your your website, and, and you're right. Boy, do you race a lot. There's like. 10 12 14 races a year and the amazing thing is that over the past like three or four years it goes first 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 second 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 they all seem to be podiums yeah it's, that's my goal man recently. i always want to yeah. Be, yeah i always that's my goal i always want to be on the stage so i get very very grumpy when I would fall off and luckily for me that um, doesn't happen that much so um, yeah first second or third I will take it and normally I'm able to to do that yeah mm-hmm. 
That's awesome. All right, so let's talk about 2015 because 2015 was a pretty special year there, looking at this. First at Challenge Roth, first at um, Ironman Netherlands, first at Ironman Spain in Barcelona. You had second in Melbourne. Yeah. You had a bunch of seconds at 70.3s and you had a third Ironman Western Australia. So that's a pretty packed year for starters, but really super successful as well. Yeah, and Actually, I was really looking forward to not to be greedy, but to, to, to have another win at Ironman Western Australia because that course does suit me very well. But um, I've raced there two times now in 2014 and 2015. And uh, both years, there something happened. So in 2014, I don't know how you can do it, but I fell off my bike in a turnaround at 90 kilometer in front of all the people. So, oh, no. Yeah, so I hurt my... I hurt myself pretty bad. So I was in second position at that time and I was really on course well to go and win the thing, but I messed it up big time. So, um, and then in 2015, I was doing really well and leading even after like 15 kilometers on the bike. So very early for, for, for my person. And um, then I, I just had a stomach bug like two days before and I already knew that it was going to be hard. So I was puking like really bad really really bad on the run and oh i remember liz bletchford she was just standing 200 meters and it was just horrendous she said oh my gosh it was just coming <laughs> out of my toes and everywhere oh no yeah so in the lead and jen stopping and puking and oh bad <laughs> yeah oh dear yeah so, so it could have been it could have been another first there yeah, as well hey? definitely i was on the way for it but uh messed it up again messed it up big <laughs> time so i have to go back because um i need a win there it's on my list <laughs> it's, it's beautiful as well isn't it the western australia course Ooh, is I just love it. stunning i love it and i got a lot of family uh down under so and most of them live in western australia close to perth so yeah. it's really nice to race there and but you know what um after that third because i still struggled on and hold on for my third place so i i was happy with that as well because 2015 had been such an amazing year and i really was very very thankful for that year so um yeah that's awesome um and you obviously decided to not race kona that year yes was that one of those decisions where you thought right i'm going to step back from kona for a year or two and, and concentrate on racing more races or what was your thinking behind not going to kona um the reason that i didn't race kona because uh, as you say yeah, i was qualified and um i could have gone but um i just didn't want to it sounds really weird and for maybe amateurs that are listening uh that have their dream to go to kona i've been there a couple of times and you should uh, like we mentioned before that you have to be hungry and you have to be um like uh, you really want to do that race with heart and soul and i just i wasn't hungry and i didn't want to go and then it doesn't make any sense for me to go and race the best of the world and when I don't want to because then uh, there will be girls that are maybe uh, not as good as me that will just kick my butt like big time because yeah <laughs> because that's not showing gratitude at all to go to Kona and just be there and race and you don't really want to it's a little the, the island and the race itself deserves better so when you don't want to and you don't have the the need to do a good race there then you shouldn't go because you don't belong there and you don't belong a spot to race there so uh, I said no I'm not going and I will go next year again and you know I, th I think it was a really good decision Rob because like this year from the beginning of the year I was so focused and so determined to go and have a good race in Kona and I'm like so looking forward to go back to the island and have another really good race there and yeah it's just the good attitude that that's the attitude that you need to go into a race like Kona you can't go there like I was last year and so it was a good decision and I'm happy that I did it like that yeah and, and you can tell in your voice you've got that desire back oh you've definitely got that, you, you oh, really want to be there I and, really and... want to be there yeah and it's uh, and and on fire with Van Van Vlerken is is going to be a dangerous competitor for anybody on that well, course. Well, I hope so. A little bit on fire I am already at the moment. So um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen. Let's talk about your races this season. What do you think has been your? I was reading your blog a little bit before. What's been your your highlight of the year so far? You won Challenge One of Karelia in the year. You've done a really fast half marathon in the Netherlands. You won Challenge Rimini. Um, I know you had a bit of an interesting experience at Challenge Denmark, didn't you? Oh yeah. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> well, I wasn't that lucky. 
He, um, yeah, you know, stuff, even after racing for 17 years, still stuff goes wrong. <laughs> and for people <laughs> that know me, I'm like so overplanned and organized. So when somebody knows the course and wants to do everything perfect, then it's me. So all the things that happen that challenge Denmark, challenge Fredericia, uh, they just don't fit to me. Like I went wrong on the bike course three times and there were several stuff things that didn't go as planned so i didn't deserve to win so i didn't win i got second behind um behind camilla Pedersen, and i got my first um penalty i got a penalty on the run and nobody can tell me for what so you can imagine how angry i was and uh, well <laughs> yeah i mean have you have you had no resolution no, to that can no. i still not tell no. you what you got penalty for no, no. <laughs> Well, okay. they did it. Right. Well, that's, that must be a little bit frustrating for you. You know, I, I put all my frustration in the race the week after at Challenge Finland. So, and I won that one. So, I'm, I already forgot about all it. And, you know, to be very honest, um, Frederica in Denmark, where the race was held, um, has a very... Um, yeah, special. That town has a special uh, meaning to me because I raced there as a, a duo athlete like three times and I became world champion there, I too long distance. So um, they could do or throw whatever to me and I will still love Fredericia Denmark. And to be very honest, the race was just amazing. And where do you get like dolphins on the swim course in Europe? So uh, when you... I know, I couldn't yeah. believe that when I read it. Isn't they were swimming underneath you in the, in the race. That's amazing. Yeah. We watched them the day before as well. It was just amazing. So for all you guys and girls out there that didn't get their spot to Kona, don't worry. Just sign up for Chantredericia next year and you can go and swim with Dolphins Dam. <laughs> There you are. I'm, yeah. I'm convinced already. I want to be there. Yeah, it was an awesome race. And the week the week after as well, Challenge Finland was just um, a country that I've never been to. And it was just stunning. It was just amazing. So I did back to back. I had two really, yeah, good, solid races, two fast times as well. And yeah, all the races have been going well this year. The only problem I had was in my um, A race, first A race of the year at Challenge Rod this year. There were some things that didn't go as planned and yeah i wasn't uh, very happy with my third place there after winning challenge rod three times you don't want to go there and finish third so um a yeah. little disappointing but you know what it's all okay um i'm counting on a lot of luck um on a race day on october the 8th on a beautiful island so <laughs> well that's the thing first up maybe you're saving your luck up for that performance and the second thing is it's often the case that someone who has an amazing performance in the middle of the summer doesn't have an amazing performance on October the 8th. So maybe that'll work in your in your favor as well. Oh, I will take it. Robert, you say that. I, I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Perfect, you, yeah. you think I've got some kind of authority over this, but that's great. We'll work with that. <laughs> sure. What do you think your, your, your best performance has been during your career? Wow, that's a hard question. Um... I think I would tend to go to Ironman Florida. Yeah, our, my last Ironman Florida. I did that race three times in a row. And I also won it three times in a row. Very lucky girl. And the last time I did a personal best in 8 hour 40, 40. 42 41 oh i can't even remember 43 i don't know rob i forgot so but um that was one of my best races ever i i rode a four hour and 35 on the bike and uh wow yeah for the people that don't know me i'm not that tall and not that big and so that's a pretty pretty solid bike time for a little girl like me so i'm i sure think that's is. my best performance up to day but um i know i'm getting a little older but i still feel a lot of improvement on all three disciplines so maybe i still something hidden there so well fingers crossed hey yeah. now listen i'm, I'm going to leave us on this question um as a person who came into triathlon from duathlon with swimming not being your strongest and obviously you mentioned earlier you swam like a 108 in your first kona <laughs> Yes. And you've obviously you've improved massively. Um, and one of the questions I get repeatedly on the podcast is, you know, how am I going to improve my swimming? What can I do? So what was the progression for you? How did you manage to improve so much in your swimming? Oh, to be really honest, I just worked my ass off. Uh, yeah yeah <laughs> there you go yeah. easy as that yeah it's just I, I to be honest i swim six times a week and uh in the past i would swim seven seven times a week you know uh, this is interesting 
maybe for other people uh, as uh, to know, when I started triathlon in 2000, my first triathlon with a one kilometer swim, hold on, are you sitting? You're sitting, right? Yeah. I, I swam 21 minutes on a kilometer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm now. So slower than two minutes at 100 meters. How hey? oh, ridiculous. So I now swim 21 minutes on a 1500. So, uh, but to get there, well, I'm not an expert, but I've been swimming for 17 years now and I just worked so hard. And um, the biggest difference for me was that um, I changed to uh, fighting the water to see it as my friend and treat it a little nicer. So I, oh, I was just fighting every session and you really have to get, you, you have to let loose, you know, you can't be fighting the water. That's not working. It will work against you. And um, yeah, the biggest jump I made is with Siri the last five years. I'm really swimming better than ever. And um, it's probably because she lets us swim a lot with the band. So not only a pool boy band, but a lot with just band only. So and don't yeah. be afraid for the people that are listening when you're going to try that out with just a band only. OK, <laughs> I drowned or went backwards the first time as well. So no worries. <laughs> yeah. You could just go and do it. And after a couple of times, we'll go better. And you just have to keep on trying and it will get better. And it improved my swimming so much. And um, I don't actually know if this is a serious secret. So if I'm even allowed to say this. so uh, I, <laughs> That's great. Maybe you've just given it away. Oh, yeah. I hope I'm not getting in any problems here. And, you know, I'm living in that basement. So when she hears it, she will be down the stairs. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, that's brilliant now siri won't hit me she 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 adores me i adore her and she has done everything to make it perfect for me here we even got a a new bed she gave she organized us just such an amazing bed and they're going to go to the the british market as well very soon it's called a rest bed and it's just the most amazing bed i've ever been sleeping in and you, rob you probably know that um like training is important, but I do think that recovery is at least as important as uh, as your training. So your recovery, your sleeping is just a huge part of getting better and better. And we're sleeping like, yeah, it's a sleeping camp here. We're <laughs> We hey, maybe it. you need to get yourself sponsored by that bed company if they're making such a big difference. That'd be that'd be a great sort of testimonial for them, wouldn't it? It's amazing. It's called a rest bed, and it adjusts adjusts your pressure while you're sleeping. Yeah. Oh, it sounds nice. Yeah. Well, you can get it too. Because I'm, I'm going to look it up after yeah, this. <laughs> you can, if they, they're heading to the to the European market and especially to the UK market as well, so you can get a bed like that and sleep 11 or 12 hours straight, like I do. Because, yeah. Well, I've got a four-year-old, so I'm not sleeping 11 or 12 oh, hours anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you take him in the bed with you and he will sleep a little longer. <laughs> there you go. There's there's the key to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, well, listen, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you. I, I love talking to people who approach this sport in a slightly different way, and it's not all about the me all about the physical and I can absolutely see why you're working with Siri. You remind me so much of her and the way you talk. And she's obviously got under your skin. And I think probably if you talk to her, you'd find that you've got under her skin a little bit as well. Um, and I really hope that your, sort of your positive attitude pays off in Kona because we'd love to see you on the top step of that podium in Kona this year. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will do everything that I can. And the preparation here in Boulder is just going so well. We love it here. And, you know, it's such a difference to have your coats on your side and there's no, no space for cheating. And I'm really pushing myself harder than ever. And I, I think it will pay off in Kona, but you never know what the island has in stock for you. So yeah we will see well you race with gratitude yes. and it's, it's it's a win anyway isn't it yeah you're totally right there yep all right well listen you get yourself back off down to the pool and thanks very much for yep. talking to us hey thank you very much for having me and um yeah hope to chat to you soon we'll have you back on when you're the world champion again how about that oh hey that's a deal i love that <laughs> <laughs> cheers okay, Yvonne. cheers 